during World Cup 1978. Yeah, here's a clue, soccer fans. I was 14. And for the winning team, Argentina, there were three players that stood out for me. Leopoldo Luque, Mario Kempes, and Osvaldo Ardiles. He was my early, early introduction to what would become the glories of Iniesta and Xavi. Didn't know why he stood out to me so much, but in the bike shed at the old Cults Academy, when we were playing World Cup with a tennis ball, two guys against two guys against two guys, and a keeper, first to score goes through. When we smacked that tennis ball past the keeper, Ardiles was the name we were shouting out then. Certainly I was. The first time I met Ozzy Ardiles, quite some significant time later, I found out he was one of the few men in the world who swear as much as I do and as gleefully as I do. I don't care what people say about how I speak about my guests. I choose them with affection and wisdom. I choose them because largely I think they'll bring you great stories and tell them well. But I adore Ozzy. World Cup winner. I think, I think the first World Cup winner on this series. Is that right, people? Tell me, help me. Ozzy, yeah, everybody's going to remember him for his cheeky skills, his cheeky grit and his toughness. When Mickey Hazard was recently in Barcelona speaking to Spurs fans on stage, he was asked, who would you immediately take one player from your era into the modern Spurs? And he didn't choose Glenn Hoddle, who he thinks the world of. He chose Ozzy Ardiles. Ozzy Ardiles, you'll remember for Ozzy's going to Wembley, his knees have gone to Tremblay. But the young Ozzy Ardiles, did you know he was in the Arge Argentinian RAF? Did you know that while he was at university studying to be a lawyer, friends of his who protested, protested democratic values disappeared? And that means they were taken, tortured and killed. Why wasn't he one of them? Who was his infamous father-in-law? What was the World Cup like? Why did he nearly not play in the World Cup final? And when he did, why was there a massive, massive risk to his health and well-being and maybe even his eventual freedom? Who knows? There are stories galore in this episode with the mighty Osvaldo Ardiles. I am fortunate enough to know and be friends with his tremendously talented son. There'll be very poignant uh, descriptions of uh, Aussie's time in the UK during the Falklands War, why he had to leave, what that felt like, and the loss of his cousin, who was the first of the Argentinian casualties during the Falklands War. Maybe not everybody will agree with everything that's said in this episode, but I guarantee you, you will see um, and understand a different side of Osvaldo Ardiles, Spurs legend, yes, Manager in several different continents, world champion for Argentina. Stay tuned, this is a special episode. Today, um, beginning of your listeners, we're in the heart of London. It's grey outside, but there's a little ray of sunshine sitting about half a metre away from me. It's the man whose name I used to shout out when I scored a goal in World Cup football in the concrete of Cults Academy in 1958. Sorry, sorry, 1978. We have with us the majestic Osvaldo Ardiles. Ozzy, good morning. What Hello, is? good morning. And uh, yeah, the weather is uh, pretty bad outside, but I hope that uh, this interview is going to be a lot better. That's a code for what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> well, yes, this is uh, exactly <laughs> when I was working. Toward this place, I was thinking, what the bloody hell I am doing here? What have I let myself into? We will see. Um, one of the bad things about life, Ozzy, is that we get older and people, mm. young people come along. I hate them. Yes. But for their benefit, because I know what kind of footballer you are, take away mm. your humility <laughs> and tell the truth about the kid who played on television in baby football yes. at 12 in Cordoba, the guy who played brilliantly for La Gloria, who yeah. came to Spurs, etc., etc. Describe what made you, you, a world-class footballer. I will have to say that the main, main factor has been luck. It is a simple... Oh, it is luck. I mean, when I said that... 
I have a kind of theory that everything in life is slack because I was born in a house. I was, first, I was born in a country that it was uh, football crazy all the time. Um, I was born with a kind of uh, coordination between my mind and my legs, my body in general, but especially my legs. And in a place like Argentina, I have to be a football player. It's as simple as that. Uh, luck because I never have suffered any, any very bad injury. Luck because I survived one or two accidents that it would very easily cost my life. But, uh, luck because my father was a lawyer. That means that I, every day I eat a piece of steak, for example, because in Argentina we all, if you don't eat a steak, it's, it's like you have not eaten. So every day I would have a piece of steak and we do potatoes and all. Uh, and spaghetti, whatever it is. So uh, all this, when you put all this into the mixer, it's uh, very, very clearly it's luck. You see, whenever you tolerated me at Revista de la Liga, and particularly on the yeah. nights out, <laughs> and you did tolerate me because mm. you were very generous, we always ended up in some kind of friendly argument. Or that. And I have to argue right now, you, yes. you haven't told the truth. You, no, said, no, no, that, it is you said you had to be a footballer. Your dad did not want you to be a football? No, not at all. No, 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 no. My dad was one of the very, very few Argentinian people that did not, did not like football, in fact. Um, he didn't want to see me play. He was all the time afraid that I was going to be hurt, especially because I have, uh, we were four brothers. I am the third one, and my two older brothers, especially my second brother, always took me to kind of very funny places poor places, because the football was much, much better. The, it was a proper challenge there uh, for me. So um, it was very, very tough. And of course, my father was not, uh, was not happy uh, that I was playing there. Because your dad was a lawyer? Yes. So my, yeah. so my father, as you know, I, I studied law. Uh, that was the, my oldest brother is a lawyer. And, uh, but I was, I was playing, and very naturally, I was quite good. What kind of lawyer would you have been? Ah, I think I would have been more, more the lawyer, I would have been a judge, probably. Um, when I was studying law, I, I mean, I didn't want to be so much a, a lawyer, but much, much more a, a judge. Perry Mason, you remember Perry Mason? I do. <laughs> of course I remember Perry Mason. I'm Perry, older than him. Yes. No, no, no you're not. And uh, Perry Mason was my idol in television and so on. So I always feel that uh, I thought that they were going to be like I can me. imagine you in court and I can imagine you winning. But the <laughs> thing about being a judge, was that about justice or was that about authority? Or did you like the nice robes? No, 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 no. It's about justice. It's about the, the principle. It's about the... Yes. No, no, no. It's not about, of course, you're a judge, you're going to be very high in the... But it was not because of that, no. My father, after... He was a very, very humble man as well. He was never in the pursuit of, of money, for example. Money, my house was a kind of a bad word. Say. We never, ever, ever talk about money. My father would never allow to talk about money. But coming back to football, I, little by little I was playing football. Uh, I knew I was very good. No fa false modesty no, here. No, tell the truth, because yes. we want people who, who didn't have the privilege of seeing yes. you to understand. Yes. Some people always, I've been asked who discovered you. Well, nobody discovered me or, or everybody discovered me. I mean, everybody knew I was going to be, I was going to be very, very good. And uh, the big, big question was because I was very small. I was very small, and so the question, the big, big question was, yes, you're brilliant, but are you going to be able to play the first team? Football in Argentina was pretty cynical at the time, and so on. But little by little, I, uh, I went there. You're the same height as Di Stefano, for example. Yes. And growing up, I don't know how much his games were televised, but how aware were you of Di Stefano? No, not at all. Uh, I knew Di Stefano, Alfredo Di Stefano after, yes, and, and I shake hands with him, and of course, I, when I knew all his accomplishments, brilliant. But my, the people I, I admire, you're talking about the 66 World Cup, for example, in England. This is the first one that I, I saw in television, so doesn't look good for an Argentinian, but I will say it anyway, but, but my idol was Pelé, of course. And I always fight in my, in talking with, 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 with the people, talking about football and so on, because I was very, very pro-Brazilian in my, in my makeup. Uh, I, 
de Argentina en fútbol. Yo compré de Argentina en fútbol and de Brasil en fútbol. Brasil es more samba, Argentina es more tango. So we are much more tough and samba Brasil is kind of, we just play and so on. Fluid. No? Fluid and beautiful fútbol and so on. In 66 in Argentina, saying you were pro-Pele or pro-Brazil, yeah. that was a little bit dangerous. Because the rivalry is very serious. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Not, not dangerous in the way that somebody was going to hit me or anything. But some people just say, what, what, how can you? How can you support Brazil? It's not that I support Brazil, but I, I'm very sorry, but I absolutely love great football. Uh, 1970, going forward a little bit more, that I knew a little bit more. It was my favorite team of all time, the Brazil of 1970, World were, were Cup champion, when they, when they play with 10 ten number 10s in... In the side. <laughs> yeah, senior, yeah, That's a great expression. Tostado. I've never heard that expression. Yeah, they were number ten. I've never heard it before, but it's a beautiful expression. They were well, you know what it means I do. to be number ten. So the, all these players, they were number ten in their own team. Who was the real number ten for them then? Not the number. Tostao? Tostao in, in the World Cup he played with the number nine, but in fact he was more the number ten. This, yeah. The, the brain behind all this thing. But it was so, it was Yalcino, Yalcino, Tostao, Pelé, Rivalino. Oh, Gerson. 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 Yeah. Uh, Gerson, Tostao, Pelé, and Rivalino. Say no more. No bad. And then the other midfield, the defensive midfield in inverted comma was Claude Aldo. That was another wonderful, wonderful player. Yeah. Again, when I started to play football, being a kid, So the challenge was to go. It was a shanty town, not far from my This house. is where your brother took you to the shanty town. Yes. Is this Fupo Potrero uh, yes. that we're talking yes. about? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, you see the, the pitches there, they were awful. Funny enough, for example, my brother, my two older brothers, they could not come into the shanty town. No, 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 because they're, you, you arrive with the Nike shoes or some kind of. You, you, no, no, nobody will hit you, nothing, but they will, they will take everything from you. I mean, they will take it. Oh, they, they take it. You cannot go with the bicycle, they will take the bicycle, of course, that is, they go without saying. And if you receive it and so on, they will give you a pop on and, and they will take it anyway. <laughs> Funny enough, I, I could go there. Why? Because I was a good football player. It was this kind of respect. So I come inside the house and, yeah, no problem. And some of the boys, I took, I took them home, we play, and after that, come on, come into my house and so on. And... My poor mother, that we would give him a sandwich or something to eat and tea, coffee, whatever it was, or chocolate, and yeah. But football gave me this kind of uh, protection. It's funny because it isn't just talent that allowed you to be in the shanty town. I, I think that we're going to come on to this theme in a minute because I actually do mm. plan these interviews. You may not notice, but mm. we do plan it a little bit. And you're, you're tough. <laughs> you know, for all that you're born bright, intelligent, mm. Born talented, born to a good family, uh, you know, s a smart parents, good parents. You're a tough man. <laughs> so being in the, 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 the Barrio Potrero or whatever, simple talent alone, you're a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> so whether you're talented or not, they could have picked <laughs> on you. Um, but I think you, you are born innately with a tough mentality, tough personality. In the football game, coming to play the football game, of course, I mean, they were very, very tough. They, they would not give me kind of special, they would give me special attention, attention, meaning they would try to kick me, yes, of course. Um, so I learned a lot. I mean, I, have, I learned how to defend myself. I never have a, I never have a, a bad injury. My first injury, in fact, was when I was 30 years old. Uh, a silly, a silly one. We maybe come later on to that. In played against Manchester City, blah blah blah. But it was. Um, I never had in, any injuries because playing in that kind of situation, that it gave me the ability to to jump when 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 the tackle was coming to anticipate. Very very. I used to think, for example, that was later on in life. For example, if I am playing with the with a guy that, say in England, definitely they will come for me if they can put me in the stand. They will do it because, I mean, it's a big, big uh, advantage for them. It was also pretty much allowed then. It was. Más o menos. The, the referees, were, they gave the guys who came looking for you two or three goals and then they would yes, say, okay, enough. Exactly. For, for five or ten minutes, they was kind of licensed to kill. It was as simple as that. I mean, they, I knew. So if somebody come, if somebody heard me say, I always thought, well, It's not, it's not because they did it or they are brilliant. Or, no, it was my fault because I allowed them. I allowed them to be close enough. I, I, 
I had to read the situation. I had to read the situation and no allow them to be, to give them the chance to kick me, to put me out of the stand. I understand. Therefore, it's a strong yeah. point of view. Yeah. Because it's really their fault. But your awareness... It and is. And I was going to come to that. I wish I was playing now. <laughs> With the amount of protection right you, now. You'd play too. forever. Ooh. You'd have 35 assists per it's, season. Exactly. Probably 10 goals. Yes, no problem. Easy. But uh, when you, given that you didn't play not now... Not to mention I, I will be a lot richer. In, in you would be a lot richer. No problem. And a couple World Cups That is another well. luck. That is another luck. This is how I... When I think about luck and so on. If I was born 20 years later, I will, I will be a lot, a lot, a lot richer than I, that I am right now, as simple as that. If I was, when I was born, if I was born, say, 20 years before, I will be very poor, or I will be quite poor. Again, that, that is, is 100% luck. This is in the way I look at luck. It's a great way to find peace mm. in life, to not just accept, but to assess and say, I recognize the good things. Yes. I, I need to ask you, Ozzy, because I think it's important to your story. I think your mum's dad was chief of police. No, My me, your, wife, your, dad. Your wife's dad, yes. pardon me, was chief of police. Yes. And Cordoba, in those days, w was quite an interesting place. What kind of city were you growing up in? It's a very beautiful mm. city. Yep. But, but in those days, I think it was a city full of risk, mm. full of conflict. Yes. Try to make people understand what was going on around you in Cordoba. <laughs> Well, that was the time you're talking about early 70s, 71, 72, 73, and so on. I made my debut in the first team, 69, I was 17 years old. I was pretty famous because that came from being... This is Instituto, La Gloria, Instituto, no? Instituto, okay. La Gloria in Córdoba, yes. Um, very nice club. Again, I was playing, I was born in, in a place called Juniors. Um, General Paz Juniors, and it's very affluent, and, and I was a member of the, of, of the club. This club, Juniors, was the best club in Córdoba. It was brilliant. It was num number one in everything, in, in basketball, in swimming. It had everything. They have every, like Real Madrid, so they have everything and so on. So it was the best, the best club in Córdoba. My father made me, made me so I, I lived there. I lived there every day, and so on. I was there. They were not the number one in football, crucially. So... When, when I had to sign, I was 13 years old and I started to play more serious football, I went to sign for Instituto. That in football was better than juniors, but nowhere near in, as a club. The people in juniors, they were not happy at all. There was the, in a way, I was the cream of the cream, say, and, and suddenly, hello, thank you, bye-bye. Goodbye. And, uh, but again, that the, the, the decision was not a difficult one. It was a, it was a football decision. It was a football decision, in, basically, in junior, I will play with my kind of little posh friends. They are very good, they're very nice, no problem. But the other was a real, real challenge. I mean, they were much tougher, the background was not as, as good and so on. So I, well, one is, we were winning all the time to start as well, so. <laughs> That's nice. But coming back to what you were saying, the 70s, yes, Cordo Cordoba is the second city of Argentina. Argentina is divided by the states, like United States. So you have um, the number one state is Buenos Aires. And the capital, where the, where the capital is, Buenos Aires, the capital of the, of the country. <coughs> the second state uh, is Córdoba. And the capital of the Córdoba state is Córdoba City. So I was in Córdoba City. So uh, Córdoba City is uh, Che Guevara was born there, for example, um, to give an idea. Famous revolutionary, famous... Very, very, very left famous. Left-wing yeah, 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 exactly. A lot of the things that happened in Argentina, a lot of the things have started in Córdoba. Why? Because you have a very famous, very, very famous, the, the first university in, uh, in Argentina, one of the very first in, in Latin America. So a place of learning, yes. a place of culture, yes. a place of education, yes. a place which the ruling people don't like, a, a place of thinking and ideas. Absolutely. And I was in university as well. I was in, in a very social thing. I mean, law. If I understand it, you lived in a time of Kidnappings, bombings, yes, 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 trying yes. to overthrow the state government. Yes, it was a big uh, upheaval. In fact, in 1969, against the, the national power, Perón, uh, Juan Domingo Perón, was living in Spain at the time, in Madrid, and uh, he was uh, out of the presidency in Argentina in 1952, 53, no, 54. I had one or two years old, and he went to, to Madrid, and he was commanding... Argentinian politics, in fact, from there. From Spain. From Spain, that's right. The Peronista, very, very strong in Argentina. And in Argentina, we have a military government, very a little bit 
not very clever thing. And uh, so there were a lot of revolt in Cordoba. And now, coming back a little bit to your question, my father-in-law, say, uh, then he was a colonel in the army, and he was put as a, as a chief of police in, in Cordoba City. What it means, really, that, it was, that was Perón come back to Argentina, and he was the president of Argentina. So when that happened, uh, it was uh, in, Argen in Cordoba, it was a democratic government, the Peronistas. But the Peronistas have basically have two wings. One is the very, very right wing, kind of fascist, and the other one was a very, very left wing. And the one in Cordoba was left wing. So in fact, it was quite a problem for, for Perón. So my father-in-law, he was imposing the government of Cordoba as the chief of police. And yeah. To bring order, to, 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 bring, to keep people... To, to have it in check. But to give you an idea how, how it was, I, I was married in 1973, December 1973, at the end, after Christmas. I was married there, and I have presents from Perón, I have presents from, from the governor of Córdoba, uh, the, the governor, the vice governor, the minister of justice, everybody, they were in my wedding, December of 73. Two months later, my father-in-law put all of them in jail <laughs> and, and took control of, of the government. It was, a, it was a very, very serious incident. It uh, is. You, uh, you can imagine. There were people dead in the, because they were... Uh, they were shot. They were fighting in the, in the street and, yeah. and so on and so on and so on. Ozzy, you know, I, I'm 56 now. Mm. So I grew up in an era when Northern Ireland was yes. difficult and dangerous and I went there rarely so I didn't have to live around it. Mm. That's the nearest I can come to understanding your yes. situation. Mm. And I presume you're going to tell me that it wasn't frightening, but it was unstable. It was all you'd ever known. You'd grown yeah. up in it. You were, if I, if I don't say your family was powerful, at least you were in Jufid, you, you were in, in a good position. But compared to how you live today, or how your children and your grandchildren live today, it, it was the Wild West mm. in behaviour. It was. Of course, you are 100% right. When I was there, it didn't, it didn't look that bad, say. But in fact, it was a cold room of... Uh, and apart from that, I was in university as well. Yeah. So it was all these ideas, in, I mean, the different ideas. And I mean, some of my friends in university disappeared, for example. Disappeared? They disappeared, yes. Which so, means they were taken and killed. That's right. To complicate more things, in, I, did the, I did the army. I was con conscripted. In this the, was obligatory. You had to you do had, it, really? Yes, yes. You yes. had to when, one when you, year? When you were 20 years old, you had, for one year, you had to do it. We are four brothers. The only one that did the bloody army was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, because somebody had a word. For no, the no, 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 because, no, 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 because it was in the way that I seen is you, you, you lose one year. That's that's the point. You are studying, you can study. If you are uh, working, you cannot work. So in a, in a lot of ways, you lose one year. So my older brother, in fact, he he was he used to play a little bit. and He was quite good. He had a very bad injury in his knee when he was going to go into the army. And the army, at the time, he had to, he took the, because it's a kind of, uh, you go in the a, in a ballot, and, and he was the Navy. Navy was two years, no one. <gasps> so anyway, he was, he didn't operate himself, and so when he went, the, the, the people in the medical said, no, 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 you cannot do it, bye-bye. So no Navy, no army because of the no, injury? No, my father, no, because of, yeah. My second brother as well, he had an injury before, he, he he didn't work, so he couldn't put... So and the doctors didn't go, oh, like, another Ardilis and another injury. <laughs> Muy no, no, interesante. No, 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 no. <laughs> True. True. Then, Rick, Rick is 15 days younger than me, so Ricky was in the same thing. Ricky Villa. Rick, Ricky Villa, yeah. Ricky is a lucky, lucky man. <laughs> what happened to him? What happened to him? There are certain numbers they don't do the army because depending how many people the army needs, so some people, so... From number one zero to one fifty. This is the ballot. It's the ballot. Maybe you're lucky, maybe you're not. That's right. So he had the ballot. No, not army. <laughs> lucky Ricky. Then the world is screaming now. They're only listening to this in the future. The world is screaming. What kind of soldier were you? I did the, the first part. The the first part was um, the tough part. The, all the the training and so on. So that I means running cut completely, like like you. Shaved off. Shave. Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a handsome young man like you with the shapely <laughs> mm. 1970s haircut, I guess that was a horrible moment. Oh, it was terrible. And every, oh, every soldier were trained to... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, at, at the end of the day, everybody... <laughs> everybody yeah. off. Yes. I remember. You must say, it looking now, it looks 
it looks quite good. Yes. You didn't but, like it at the time. No, 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 I hated it. It's, it's really in fashion now. It was a wonderful experience. Of course, I didn't want to do it, but after being there, the camaraderie, it's incredible. You are in the army and people talk about, it's funny how things work sometimes. People talk about patriotism, talking about the nation and this and that and the other. And I may be a little bit of a Judas, but uh, the only thing that you, you had to do there was to survive. Not that they were going to kill you, no, but to survive meaning that you have to be there trying to do the less work possible. It teaches you to be no. very, very street smart, right? I was quite street smart, to be honest, <laughs> already, because I was already playing in the first team. Voluntary to do some kind of dirty work. So there were, uh, say, 10 people. One, In fact, they were not doing one, one step forward. It was the other one going Everybody. back. Exactly. 90 people taking one exactly. step back. <laughs> but the one that, the, what the volunteer probably, I said, okay, you just go and sit down there, relax and say, you bastard, come and you, you go and clean the toilet. Who was the university educated? Oh, hello, I am here. <laughs> okay, you go and clean Toilets the toilet. Toilet again. Exactly, toilet again. So you have to be, I was playing the first thing at the time. So it was the most famous in the, in, in the plateau thing because I was playing so many games. I playing, it was the first time Instituto went to play in Buenos Aires. We played with a big guy. We played again Boca Junior, River Play. So it was, a, for Cordo, it was unbelievable. And, and of course, I was a very integral part of, uh, of the team. So I started to go, um, I did the army, say, from seven o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock. Then I went, I went to, I went to my house. I, I stayed sometime to eat in the army because it was, not in, it was not the army, it was in the, in fact, it was the Air Force because the number again. Great memories. That year was incredible because I did, I, I did the army, I did the football, of course, uh, training every day, and, uh, and university as well. So everything. So coming back to the university, this is what maybe saved me because the university, especially in Cordoba, especially law, it was a kind of a cauldron of new ideas. By definition, they were again the, against the, the government, the junta. again the, the right wing. Because you lived in a democratic state. Yes, of course. You were in an ancient university yes. in a legal department where people were thinking about justice, universal justice, exactly. not the law, no, no. liberty. They were talking about they were talking about liberty, they were talking about justice, they were talking about democracy. And, uh, and, and then in all seriousness, to go hmm. back, because just so that people understand, that's why some of your friends disappeared and yes, were killed. Yes, yes. And when yes. you said what saved me, maybe. Football saved me because I didn't have, I was very, very pro. Uh, I was very in, in my ideas. You very, had the same ideas as the yes, people who disappeared. Yes. But you can imagine without proving it, somewhere upstairs, somebody who might have said, take that guy too, they went, no, okay, he's no, a no, footballer. No, no. I didn't. No, I didn't express my idea. I didn't have time. I didn't have time to be in university and to, and to be a member of a, of a party, maybe a Labour Party. Or, or I didn't have time, so I didn't do it. I was uh, mentally, I was uh, my ideas were with them, yes, but I never expressed it. Or I never, I, I never have time. No. Eventually, did you, did you clash with your father-in-law, or did you just keep quiet? No, 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 no. My father-in-law was very, very right wing. Yeah. And uh, no, I never clashed. I just, well, I just came here. What happened is after, when he did that in 73, 74, February 74. He organized the push against the, democracy. Right. So what he should have done from the law point of view, it should be the, the national government should put him in jail, take control of the, of, of, of the state, uh, restore the authorities, the government and so on. That is from the law point of view. And he who had to go, in jail for, for, well, what he did was sedition. It's, it's called sedition. But of course, the, the, the national there, government... There are people in jail in, in Catalonia right now for 10, 15 yes. years for sedition. Yes, that's right. And Scotland is resisting yes. sending Ponsetti back to Catalonia for sedition. Yes. It's a very ancient term. Of course. Treason but, against the state, more or less. To give you an idea, that was a lot, a lot more worse because, say, in Catalonia, at the end of the day, nobody died. Um, it was basically because it was um, a boat and, okay, that, that was illegal, blah, 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 blah. But in the Argentina point of view, he just went there and he got to, you are in jail, you are in jail, you are in jail, the, the proper uh, government of the, of, of, the, of the state. No process of law. No process. All of you in jail and so on, I take control now and so on. So, mm -hmm. so that is very, very kind of uh, textbook sedition, say. 
I need to, I'm going to hop here because hmm. like say Tarantino might do in Pulp Fiction, we have to change chapters and come hmm. back. Yeah. Because naturally now I could speak about Kempes and El hmm. Flaco yep. and Huracan going to a title winning team in Buenos Aires. But it's funny when you have a good conversation and I hmm. knew this would be a hmm. good conversation because... Hmm. You're smart, mm. uh, you put up with me, we've proven that before. I'm a lucky man, I told you. But talking like this explains to me the answer to the question I'm going to ask you now. Because when you came to England first, you had very little knowledge of England, very mm. little knowledge of um, Tottenham Hotspur, very little English. And we've been told yeah. by a teammate of yours that on day one at the training, when you and Ricardo are there and training is finished, there wasn't the kind of player care that there is now with player liaison officers mm. who say, no. hello foreign players that are really important to us. Let us take you back to your home and make sure you're happy. At the end of training on, on, on day one, they kind of just tip you out into the London streets in a Ford Cortina. Is that more or less how it happened? You're left to your own devices? Well, and it wasn't a Ford Cortina. It was a bit much better than that, but uh, it's still not very good anyway. Um, <laughs> We arrived, we arrived with Ricky, and Ricky was, um, Ricky, I mean, if Ricky had to come in his own, he would never have come in his own. He didn't want to come, Ricky. I was definitely, yes, I convinced Ricky to come, because uh, I, I, I love it. I, he was your roommate. He, yes, because of all this thing that was happening in Argentina, I was, I, was, I was starting to feel very, very uncomfortable. I wanted, and after winning the World Cup, I thought, I, I already said I, I wanted to carry on playing in Europe. I wanted to come to, not in England, I mean Europe. Europe yes. is, for me... It Maybe was, Barcelona, Madrid. It was... Uh, Spain. Milan. Spain, Italy and France, in that order. As simple as that. Italy, uh, England, there was no one single player, so not even coming to the equation. So anyway, but coming back to your question, we arrived with Rick. I knew a lot of things about England already. I knew, well, I knew because of my education, I knew the, the capital, London, so it was, when it was London, I was very, very happy, very, very happy, though it was not... Uh, Another city, say, was London, the capital. And Ricky, we had the first training, and Ricky was pulling my. Oh, see, he said, this. Oh, see, oh, see, see, see. yeah, Ricky, what, what happened? What happened to you? He said, This team is fucking crap. <laughs> Pelotazos, no? Yes. No, but it was bad as well. I mean, even Pelotazos were not very good. Uh, <laughs> they didn't even kick no, the long ball. It was very, very typically. A, this is something that. Keith Wilkinson never was very economical with the truth, to put it like that. I mean, never told me that the team was coming from the second to the first. They just got, they just got promoted, didn't they? He did. Maybe I will, that would tip the balance for me not to come. Yeah. Because after winning the World Cup, I wanted to carry on winning things, being in the proper team and so on. And if, by definition, if you are from the second division to the third division, you're going to be struggling. Yeah. And, uh, and the team was the third from, from the second division to be promoted. I mean... We were number one candidate to go to go down, and the team was a second division team that sadly we started to play in the first division. So uh, and first game of the season is four one against the against Villa four one defeat. The first game was yes, not even four away one one incredible because they were the champion of Euro. Robertson, Archie Gemmel, Gary Bertel, brilliant team. Stick with the Scots. That was really good. I'm glad you picked the two Scottish guys <laughs> first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Robertson could play. We may talk about the World Cup as well after. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Willie Johnson. Willie Johnson, Psh. I mean, that was... I am talking about everything, but uh, that was an extraordinary thing. I remember the manager saying, saying we are going to win the World Cup. If I was the manager of this team, I would say exactly the same thing. Sunez, uh, Doug Leach, and the best, the best of Liverpool, the best of Manchester United, Jordan, Macari, Martin Buckham... Born in, born in the Aberdeen, best, the best. <laughs> Aberdeen Cup winner in 1970. Ozzy, I love you even more. It's still Archibald? No, no, it's <laughs> not nearly. Steve nearly. Was, Steve, was, Steve was after. But the, the, top, of, the top of the cream of, uh, of Celtic, or Rangers, it was uh, Nottingham Forest, Robertson, Archie Gemmel, and so on. Brilliant. Anyway, I'm talking. But you, how did you even... Because, let's be honest, in, in Argentina 1978, just like the rest of the world, there's no internet... No. I, I refuse to believe that Argent Argentine television was. And now an update from the Scottish camp. Yeah. Uh, which I think we were in Cordoba. We certainly played in you Cordoba. You were definitely. No, you were based in Cordoba. Based in Cordoba. In fact, in, uh, you were based in Cordoba. It's a little town just outside Cordoba 
only 20 miles, Alta Gracia, that is very Alta nice, Gracia. very beautiful place and with lakes and... Like Alta mountains. Gracia literally means a high, high beauty, high grace, your, yes. your holiness. Yes. We, we, we picked the wrong place then. <laughs> well, <laughs> literally. But you were in the, you were in the hotel, big hotel, there was a casino there as well. So, anyway. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking we about, should have won the World Cup. I'm glad you said it, not yes. me. Yes, forget about Scala for a moment. And so... Che well, you're up oh, in... Yes, we are right. It's training session one. This team is crap. Yes. And I said, Ricky, you are, I said, you're fucking right as well. I mean, basically, unluckily, we have a Glenn Hoddle and, uh, and Steve Perriman. The rest were, were, it was very clearly a second division team. So it was incredible what we did from there. I mean, this first year, we finished in the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. It was an extraordinary accomplishment, mm -hmm. extraordinary. Immediately we played against Aston Villa. Aston Villa were a very good team at the at the time, uh, they were they were the champions. They they European after. champions eighty one. That's right, brilliant. Um, so they beat us for one at home, and then we went Liverpool. They beat us seven nil, and so things were incredibly bad. Ricky, <laughs> I remember we Saturday we played Liverpool. And they beat us seven nil, and so we have a, our lesson. But Ricky was just married, so. The, the lesson with all the time in my house, he lived next door, so sometimes he will come, sometimes he won't come, or sometimes he will come, say hello, bye-bye, disappear. Okay, no problem. He had other things to keep him happy. Yes, that's right. Well, yes, me too, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn English as well. So, and so, we had, we had a teacher, Matthew, lovely, lovely man, and, and then, so, we, we played Liverpool 7 nil, and Monday was, uh, Keith Wokinshaw always did a kind of uh, meeting, all the players there and so on, and I already knew that Ricky, Ricky lives in another world, always did kind of, this is, that was his personality. So I said to Ricky this day, Monday, we are going to go early, um, you just follow me, okay? Okay, no problem. So he was there, say, with the blackboard and Keith was there, so we sit in the very back. So when we, early, in the very back. When we went in the very back, all the, all, all the senior players were there already. So all the, the junior ones here, but of course, Keith will ask questions. He will ask, what do you think of, uh, and of course, he will ask the, the senior player, not going to be asking the, the, the kids. The, the, the kids are the quiet. Senior. So, everybody was looking at the floor, <laughs> nobody said anything. <laughs> and and Keith said, what? Anybody want anything to say? And not, nobody. And Ricky said, I said, I said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't say anything. No, no, what's your, 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 I want to say this. And Keith said, uh, excuse me, Ozzy, Ricky want to say something? Uh, I said, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, of course. So Ricky stand up like that. Not, not a lie, 100%. He stand up like that and he said, Ricky, what do you want to say? Say, say what do you want to say? And he said, the cat is under the table. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody went, <laughs> Nobody could run, nobody could laugh as well because it was under the table. The cat is under the table. He learned it there. <laughs> That's the only thing he knew about, about English. <laughs> the cat is so everybody. <laughs> this is I well, love that even show more. you that show you how we were playing at the time. <laughs> that is when when serious conflicts, serious Ricky was with this thing, for example, because but Footballistically, we were playing American, South American style, English style, something in the middle. A big mix. A big mix. mix. Yeah. We wanted, definitely, definitely, definitely demanded the ball. Ricky was not touching the ball at all. He didn't touch the ball. Because maybe it's because always going over him. They or? didn't give the ball because Ricky was all the time kind of risky in the way he played and so on. So they, they don't pass the ball to him. So Ricky had a terrible, terrible time the first two and a half years at the beginning. Ricky, when coming in 1981, for example, Ricky was going to be, Ricky was, uh, for example, they, my contract, they multiply by three, my contract. His contract was, the improvement was 10%. Mm. He knew, of course, tell him, boom, this is it. So, so he was going. This is how bad he was. Of course, he scored the goal and then he, five times more, uh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> he scored <laughs> so the goal, but he scored like, the goal in, and in then the, in the first part of the final, He's really unhappy because I don't know if it's the nerves or the ball doesn't go for him 
or it's just a bad day. Exactly. Uh, if you know Rick, if you know, the, for example, you ask any Stiperryman or all the boys there, no Ricky. Well, with Ricky, you never knew. You never, ever knew. I was his room partner all the time. I didn't know if he was going to have a good game or a bad game. Ricky will play absolutely brilliant. I have seen him play in certain games, for example, for Argentina, that if Maradona played in that way, Maradona would be very, very proud of playing in that way. It was so, so good. So extraordinary talent. In the other hand, like I said, Ricky played certain games that I said, is he a professional player? He cannot be. <laughs> he cannot be a professional player. I, I don't want to make the comparison too close, but if you think about his physical shape then mm. and what he could do with his body, there were things that reminded me between Wardle and Ricky because yeah. the balance, the idea, the technical yes. skill. Also, I mean, he's he's... At this age now, he isn't the physical specimen he was then. Mm. But for somebody to have such balance and grace in that size was a little bit unusual. It was brilliant. But after saying that, I mean, the first two years, well, the team didn't give him the ball. For me, it was a little bit difficult, different because somehow I can win the ball back, so I started to play and so on. And in fact, if I didn't give the ball to Ricky, he won't touch the ball. As simple as that. You but, had to supply Ricky? Or well, I was, yeah, the other guys wouldn't? Mostly. No, the defender, for example. When I go back to, to, to the defender, we're starting to demand the ball, especially with Glenn, to the central defender, to the right back, left back, hey, don't, don't kick it, don't, don't, don't. So we impose our, our way of thinking. Of course, it, it was, basically it was Glenn and me. I were, at, the, at the time, the, we were the two most important players, of And course. Keith allowed you to, to reshape the idea of yes. the team because... Well, he was very happy. <laughs> But not, not, not every, because he's a hard man, Birkinshaw. People forget. Yes. Tough Yorkshireman. Yes. And most people in that position, even if the guy, you or Glenn, are good, they feel challenged. Mm. But he knew it was to his benefit because that's a little bit unusual in life. It was very, very clever to allow us. And then we became the most beautiful team to watch. And... And he have all these acclamations and how he has changed uh, football and so on. But like I said, it, it wasn't, basically it was Glenn and me. It was, and he allowed this to happen and so on. He was, after that, when I went to West Bromwich Albion, for example, he was my assistant manager. So, and, uh, and we used to clash a lot of time because I wanted to play everything from the back. Start playing and so on. So, oh, so no, 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 that is too much. And so, no, so, pff, no compromise. Definitely, we're going to play from the back. So that to give you an idea. So he wasn't very, very happy sometimes with it. But Glenn and me, we will not lose the ball anyway. So he started to see the, started to see the, started to see the results. Mm. And then in two or three years later, when Archibald and Crooks arrived, they were the... A proper partnership. They were the icing on the cake because all the things have already started to improve. Chris Hutton, Tony Galvin, Grant Robert, Steve Perryman right back. So all the team is starting to, to improve. But we needed somebody up front. And then the two of them arrived and they were they were brilliant. They complimented each other extremely well and and they were super players. There was a good guy in that team, in that squad, who didn't get enough games because of you and Glenn. And when I listened to him in Barcelona uh, last season, up on stage talking to people, and somebody said to him, Mickey, Mickey Hazard, mm. of all the players, mm. of every player that you would take and put in the modern Spurs, mm. Who would you choose? Hmm. And he chose you. Well, I will be very. I I, I will chin him. If he didn't <laughs> pick me. Yes. You would chin him. Um, <laughs> Mickey I, was. I don't think it was fear that made him no, choose you. No, no, no. I think it was love and respect. He's a tough guy too. Yes, yes, yes. Mickey was an ex exceptional player. It's absolutely exceptional. Exceptionally talented. Um, I will say it was not a lot of difference between him and Glenn Hoddle in terms of pure talent. I'm glad you said that. Yes. I, I adored watching. Oh, yes. Yes. brilliant. I, I mean, adored. 1984, he was our best player. Glenn and me, we were injured. He was the, he, he took control of, uh, of everything. Uh, brilliant, absolutely. And a, and a guy coming to a new environment, like not from Argentina, but coming from the northeast and finding it hard to, well, to, I don't know. He talked about it being culturally difficult for a man from the northeast to come to London. Well, now he's more a Londoner than a Sunderland, so, uh, yeah. He's a very close friend of mine, dude, yes. And Steve Archibald, I was with him at the weekend, and he was talking about how you would hurdle tackles. Mm. So you, you said, it's my fault if they get near me, and you'd been kicked in Argentina, which was 
or some macho, tough um, environment. But you were really clever on bad pitches about letting somebody lunge in, hurdle them, come yes. away with the ball and keep moving, right? Yes, give him the chance to come close to me. But when they saw that, they, that was probably maybe I had a little touch and that's it, I was bye-bye, go. England gave me a lot of more freedom of what I have in Argentina. You won't, you will not believe maybe this, but in Argentina they were, pff, you have to do certain things. You have to be in the right, you have to be in the left and so on. In fact, it was Positionally? Not, yes. And you have to do certain, you have to work for the team, meaning this work that you have to do certain things. You have to be in certain position and so on. The only one that gave me complete freedom was uh, Menotti. 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 Menotti never told me, never told me what to do. Just go. And uh, Cesar, I play in the right, I play in the left. Just go. Just play, play. Oh, that's the only thing he said to me. Never ever said to me, go to the right, go to the left. In the game, he would say, oh, see, um, the weakness for them, say, is in, the, in, in, in our right, say. Go, go more there, for example. Okay, so I will go there. But that will be after, when the game was already on. When he's reading the game yes. and reading what's happening, yeah. where but, the threats are. Yeah, but that will be once in, in ten games. He never said anything. Kim Robinson never said anything to me as well. Never said, uh, go and do something and so on. So when I came to, 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 to Tottenham, I played all over the place. I played right. In fact, in midfield, for example, I, I prefer to play left mm -hmm. than to play right. Mm -hmm. And number eight was more right. When I went, when I played in Argentina, in coming into the national team, I was playing for Huracán in Buenos Aires. Again, you won't believe that, but I was number nine. Number nine means I was a center forward, mm -hmm. because we have a super, super team. So I play. I, the only position I could play was number nine. So the the man I had to play me, so he put, well, you're number nine. And the, but not just the jersey number, also positionally. No, no, no. I did it. I did it. I did it my way. I did it. Uh, I did it my way. It can yes, be the title for this episode. My... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A mi manera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. My... Yes. I went all over the place, and we were incredibly successful. Uh, and this is why we went to the. In fact, when we played 1978 World Cup, Huracan, there were two teams that had five players each. One was River Plate, Luque, Fijol, Pasarela, etc. And we had five as well. That show you how good we were at the time. Two of them were you and Mario Tempest? No, 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 Mario, no. Mario was Rosario Central. Mario, so he's the one of the 11. Mario was, Mario was with me in Instituto. In Instituto, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Holzman, for example, you remember? René Holzman. René wow. Holzman, that's a, <laughs> what a player. Luque was the one that, for Luke, me, everybody Luke fixated was, on, and Luke was for me in the World Cup, watching it, your impact was clear. And we had seen players in Britain a little bit like you, hmm. but still you stood out. Kemp has obviously stood yep. out once he began scoring and also how he looked and everything. But for some reason, Leopoldo Luque, for me, uh, uh, caught my eye. Mm. And when it began to be explained in that 78 World Cup that he had to leave the camp because yep. his brother had died, yep. I think, I haven't researched this, in a car accident? Yes. He was coming to see the game. There was, he was coming to see Argentina play. Yes. There was a second game, France. And then in France, he was in. They never told him that. Uh, we never... Well, we didn't know, but... May not knew, but the family, the father, did not. They knew about his brother's death, and yes. they didn't tell him. No, no. And then uh, he had a terrible, terrible injury. I mean, it shoulder or arm? Shoulder, or? shoulder. That means that he played all this World Cup. He played, I, I would say fifty percent, sixty percent of his capability. So imagine the. He felt so because he wanted to be the number one. He was at the time he was competing Mario and 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 and, and, and Luke. At the end of the day, Mario was more and and so on. And I would say Mario was a touch better player. Yes, but Luke M also more from my eye. Sorry, yep. but I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Yep. Maybe more a pure center striker. More than Luke. Luke could go no, 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 wide no, no, and no, dribble. No, 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 no. Luke was. Proper, proper centre four. Awesome. I mean, he was there. He will be say Joe Jordan if you want to put it like that. Really, really the, the last one. Mario was the one that could can play can, around. Yes. In fact, some of the game he was kind of playing, kind of left midfield. Say left midfield from player and so on. We finished playing far to four to incredible against Holland. We played four to four, and I was one of the two in the middle. Gallego was a very, very defensive one. Yes, he would be all the time there, and I have freedom to go wherever I want and come back. And so I, I was. I had to help him very clearly. I was the number one, the num number one to help him. Yes, 
but I mean, I was offensive as well. So uh, well, in the World Cup that, final, we're going reverse. Right. In the World Cup final, you break through yes. two men mm. three quarters of the way up the pitch, and then you release to I don't know if it's Luke, but you release to Look. somebody who releases to Kempis for the goal. That's right. Yes. So um, so you're pushing through the lines, right. as they call it now. In the other hand. I f this is why I feel so, so close to, to, to Leopoldo Luque, because to have played in that circumstance, he went, of course, after the, the second game, he went to the, to the funeral of his uh, brother. So it was, it was incredible. A broken heart, broken, broken shoulder. Broken everything. And he played. Incredible. And he was so important for us. Um, and I feel, I mean, I was the same thing, because against France as well, I, I heard my, my toe there, and it was broken. So I tried to, I couldn't, for example, little by little, I couldn't even walk. Uh, they had to take me in the... They had to lift you, pick yes. you back. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I couldn't... But I, you kept on playing. I didn't play against Peru, for example. In the 6-0? Um, yes. I, no, I didn't play there. And in the final, what happened, Menotti was... That's the only time I saw Menotti nervous before the final, because he was playing with the second... No. Not the second team, the first team, the proper team, but I was not playing. La Rosa was playing in my position, and the team was not. Wait, wait, I think, are you talking about the build-up to the final? Yes. In training? Yes. Right. Yes. And he was not, uh, he was not happy with what he was seeing. So, in the back of his mind, he said, well, so you're going to play. Yes. So no. wait, 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 slow down storytelling. Mm. Yeah. 48 hours before yes. the World Cup final yes. in your country, yes. Going to be played in River Plate Stadium, mm. and you think you're not playing? No, possibly. I, I wa well, I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk from because we sleep here and we had to walk, say, to, to eat. We had to walk, say, 70 yards, 50 yards. I couldn't walk. So, remember Killer? Remember Killer? I were, he played with us as well. He put me in his strong guy. I couldn't walk. Um, so we were having training, and Menotti was not happy with the team. No happy with the team, and the, the one missing was me because, of course, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything, nothing at all. So in fact, he asked me to the day of the game. He asked me to no, the day before the game. He said, "Osi, I want you to to play ten minutes for for the first team." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, no problem." But if you but to play, I had to have an injection, and. The injection, after the injection, I will be worse. So The pain will be worse, the, the swelling will be worse. Yes, 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 yes. So anyways, so yeah, I, I, want, I want you to do this. Okay, no problem. So I played, and I remember it was five minutes. Five minutes, and I would say, okay, thank you very much, Ozzy, peace off, bye-bye. You're playing tomorrow. And this is how uh, I started. What did you, what, what about the psychology of... Oh, the psychology So you was, come off thinking... I, I, okay, I want to play. I'm glad I'm picked, but I could let people down. I could let myself down. Definitely. Oh, it was, of course, it was, it was not. For example, in Tottenham, the game could be incredibly important, the final and so on. I was all the time joking. I didn't. In fact, I make it a kind of obligation for me not to think about the game because I always thought that you are thinking about the game, you start to perspirate, you are losing energy and so on. So joking, 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 that's it. And in the final, for example, you can see my face, everything. I was worried. I was worried. I was worried. One, because maybe not playing. After when, when decided I was going to play, yes. But brilliant. Imagine if I didn't play the final. It would have been devastating for me. You would. Obviously, obviously. And we're, we're talking about hypotheticals now because the spoiler for everybody is you win. But which is worse in your, in your imagination on, the, I guess, the Saturday night? Not playing? Or playing and letting yourself and your country down, which I don't know which is worse, Ozzy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. playing and well, letting yourself down. It's, it's a risk all the time, yes. If it was any other game, claro. I would not have played. It was so bad. In fact, I arrived in, in England here with Tottenham one month later and I was, I was still limping, to give you an idea. And, uh, but of course, I mean, that's Jimmy Grips in the 66 World Cup. This is why I feel so so close to Jimmy because I can understand that. But Jimmy, because but if people don't realise what you're talking about, Jimmy was the starting striker and Jimmy was yes. oh, a Jimmy. magician and one small Jimmy injury was, keeps him out of Absolutely. Of this is how I feel so, so close to him. I, I talk many, many, many times with, with Jimmy. I'm very, very glad that he, he, he opened his, 
mine and he, he told me that, uh, for example, I thought that it was a kind of, he was going to be very, very hurt with Al Ramsey, for example, and he was not. Um, before the World Cup, put it like that, be th there were three players that they were the number one. Bobby Moore, Gordon Bank as well, Bobby Moore, Bobby Charlton, and, and Jimmy. And Jimmy, for personality, for everything, oh, come on, we are in England, we are going to win the World Cup. He was the one pushing everybody else to, toward that end and so on. The other one, Bobby was more calm, Bobby Charlton as well, and so on. He was the, the force. And, and it took and then, the, the greatest player of all time, Leo Messi, maybe 10 years, 12 years to break Jimmy's scoring record. Yes. So if people only know him as a name, yes. they need to understand that he, he glided he across was, the pitch and I'll scored for fun. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, you ask me who was the best player, English player ever, he will be one in the top three, definitely. This is how good I think he was. So he, he was obviously devastated when he didn't play the, the, the cup final. After saying that, Bobby, um, Jimmy's played very, very, there were only 11 players. No subs, no, no subs. so he suddenly played 20 minutes, oh, bye-bye, and, and so on. So again, how this interview started? Lucky. Luck, same thing. What about if my injury was just a little bit more? Yeah. A little bit more, I won't be able to play. As much as they have people that, that play with broken leg and so on, but yeah, lovely. But depending how the, the broken leg is, I have seen that. I had two broken, broken legs. In the first one was a little one, just a little one. But the pain was extraordinary. The pain was so bad, it was here. The pain was so bad I couldn't move. I mean, I, I couldn't even think about it. I think and it was painful. And the other one, I have a proper broken. It was proper, proper broken. Uh, and yes, I carry on. I carry on walking and so on. And suddenly I started to, to feel worse and worse. But I walked for a while, say. Mm. So, it again, could. it's luck. And Jimmy, so Jimmy was basically bad luck that he couldn't play the, the fun. And and you win the final, and you you sneak off in a police car to see yep. um, your wife, who's mm. going to give birth to my friend mm. Federico, yes. one of your boys. Um, I'd speculate that summer nineteen seventy eight was quite a good summer for you in general. It was quite a not, not bad as things <laughs> quite go. Quite a year, yes. Ozzy, this is the point where you get to choose because mm. uh, this is a this is a much you've talked about. Um, life in England and then having to leave England so many times. And you don't have to speak mm. about it today. No. But it's an interesting subject. And you lost a cousin in the, mm. in the war between the UK and Argentina. Two of the people who listen, mm. we have lots of loyal listeners. So we asked them, what do you want to know? And um, one of them greeted me as a boludo. That's uh, mm. Jai Padam which is a, a kind of mean word in Argentinian Spanish, a little bit, but also a little bit affectionate, maybe a little Could bit. Could be. Could be. I like your style. Could be. And Sean O'Keefe. So I'm going to read them. Normally I summarise them. Sean says from Cork, my late history teacher, Ollie Ryan, a Spurs fan, told me about Ozzy Ardiles getting abused by fans as late as 1984, sometimes by Spurs fans also. I'd like to know how Ozzy felt and dealt with that during the Malvinas crisis. Sean calls it Malvinas mm. crisis. Although I'm aware that maybe you'd prefer to steer clear of this kind of subject, Sean also says, on, on a lighter note, a much lighter note, could you ask Osvaldo how much fun he had working with Giles, Dunphy and Brady on RTE <laughs> in 2010 mm. and 2014? But Jai says, how difficult was it playing a World Cup in your home country during a military dictatorship under the coaching of Minotti? Someone who was clearly opposed to the views of the junta but had their backing to win the cup potentially. So, you, you know, you come from an, an incredible country, a country which has mm. gifted so many things to the world, but we're on a subject today. Argentina has gifted a type of thinking, a type of player to the football world. Some people might argue they wouldn't be unanimous. The three best players in the history of football all come from your country. Which they are? Di Stefano. Oh, yes. yes. Diego Maradona and Leo Messi. There are lots of other names that, that come show, in, but Argentina is... So, I, I want to say to you... That shows a little bit how we are as a country. The extraordinary individuality. And this is the problem that we have in our country as well. We have serious, serious problems to put everything together. We have a very, very talented individual player, like the three that you mentioned. I will definitely add Mario Kempes to that, uh, mm -hmm. to that list. Ahead of Batistuta. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mario was Mario. Was Mario. Just think, this isn't a visual thing. 
Ozzy just looked at me as if I was crazy. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Kempe, no, 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 and he was so that, much better than one second, Batistuta. One, no, 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 the no, 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 one second, one second. Uh, Batistuta was absolutely wonderful, wonderful, yeah, yeah. wonderful player, scored goal for fun, and absolutely. But Mario, Mario for me is very, very special player. I played with three very important, very, three very, very special players in my life. One, one was Mario Kempe, 78. The other one was Maradona, 1982, and in total, Glenn Hoddle. The three of them were a, a little bit a little bit, or maybe a little bit more, that different. Of all the people I have played in my life, the people, the person that I have more pleasure playing with, the more fun it was, and so on, it was Mario Alberto. Yes. Mm. Um, so I don't need to say more. Uh, he was my roommate in 1982 in Spain. He was my roommate in 1970 as well. I was with Ricky, but Mario arrived later. So. I don't know why, but Menotti put it in our... Maybe because he was smoking and whatever it is. Anyway. <laughs> so we have Mario. Maybe he saw two winners. Yes. Maybe he saw two winners. So, um, so Mario is, Mario is my, one of my closest friends. Is so this is why my uh, opinion of him is tinted by it, it, big, it, it, big admiration You're, you're here friendship. because um, your opinions count here more than anywhere else. The reason I mentioned the what was called the Falklands War here, which was called the Malvinas War mm. in Argentina, is that there are two things that strike me. I feel that you must have felt super isolated because here you are in London so many years later, but almost from the beginning until now, mm. you're genuinely loved in this country. Mm. And there was a small period when fans would abuse you in one way or another, but just because of your nationality. Mm. And I know that Sometimes when you went home or when you played with the national team because you were over there with the enemy and maybe you liked it over there, you were a little bit out of step with some of the national feeling in your home country, which leaves you in the middle of nowhere, which is a shit place to be. Absolutely. Is that a description of what 1982 felt like to you? I see you have put it extremely well and extremely nice. Yes, I... Now... One thing I would like to say, I was never, ever, ever abused by the Spurs, Spurs uh, people, never. The, the, the players, the players were a sense of uh, support, uh, incredible, um, but the, the supporters as well. So from that point of view, no. But of course, it was from, I was the most, probably the most famous Argentinian at the time here, with Ricky, I mean, the two of us, because, one, because of football, football is like that, and another... If you have to mention another Argentina at the time, it would be probably Gabriela Sabatini, you remember her? Sabatini, the tennis player. Yes. But of course, Maradona did, sh might have made, should have made Maradona. 78 squad, but he didn't. Yes. But so he's less famous here. So like in, you say, yes, you yes, are the yes. number one Argentine. But in here, we walk with Ricky and every every restaurant and everybody recognizing. But at the time, it, this little thing just changed because, yeah, you put it very well. I was in the middle of, of the two. And at the time, when we were talking about war, we are talking about, well, I find it funny, but war and politics is more or less the same. When you're talking about this kind of subject, the truth is going through the window. So, um, so it was very, very difficult for me. It was the worst part of my life without a shadow of a doubt. It affected me tremendously. It affected my, because I was basically as a player, uh, well, as a human being, but especially as a player, I was all the time a kind of a thinking man. So I was thinking all the time and so on. And I remember like, why I not like Ricky? Ricky doesn't think about anything. He just go out and play and so on. So I had to be thinking and, and, and it was terrible. It destroyed me for, I mean, I went to Paris and Germain uh, after, the, after the war. Uh, but I don't think you enjoyed it. No, I didn't because I, this is how bad, one, the decision to go to Paris was because, not because of football, it was Paris, and so I had a chance to go to Italy, but oh, Paris better, so I go to Paris, so not as football decision, but it's wrong. But being in Paris, I was so, so bad, I played so, so bad. I never, for example, in training, I never, I just go training and give me the ball and I would do things and very, very natural, brilliant and no problem. Now I remember going to bed earlier the day before and look, looking after me, everything, and I arrived, boom, proper, and, and I, again, and the ball was coming, and it was so, so bad. Could not believe I can play so bad. That's a mental thing, right? That was 100% a mental thing, yes. Yeah. And if I come back to England, and it took me a while to reconnect, say, with my proper, with my proper football, say, normal. 
I don't do that myself. Maybe I'm not such a good player. And I, I've seen you, you and Federico, your your son, um, who's a great friend to me. You made a very, very special film, a good film. Yeah. Uh, white, blue, and white. But originally blanco, albiceles blanco. Azul, blanco, azul. Azul, blanco, azul. Mm. To represent the white of Spurs and the blue and white of Argentina. That's right. Yeah. And you go back to. Um, I suppose we we know at Falklands now. Mm. You you know I don't even know what Malvinas means. Malvinas is uh, because the island changed uh, over the centuries. Yeah. Yes, and the French were there for a, for very very little time, for three or four years, no more than that, and they put the Malvinas, I Malvinas, see. and this is how the name. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> you went back, mm. and your face when you look at the military wreckage. I suppose it reminds you of losing your cousin who died yeah. in the Air Force. You crash. Hmm. You, you're taken to hospital, airlifted. To... It was, uh, well, it was, uh, we did uh, the film. It was not in the script, the accident. No. So no. I said to the director, well, that was not. <laughs> People you want was... to watch ESPN 30 for 30, White, Blue, White, yeah. if they get the chance, because it's a good film. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fascinating it was, film. Uh... Your face, when you look, at the evidence of the war that we've yes. just been talking about. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, it was very emotional. Very, very, very emotional. And to be with my uncle, the father of uh, my cousin that was killed in... He was the, the first pilot. He was in the Air Force as well. He was the first pilot. And I talked with a lot of the pilots as well. Until that moment, until that happened, it was a kind of, it was a kind of training for them. They go there and so on, but they were not... They didn't. I mean, they didn't never was in war with anybody. So it was a kind of a, from the moment that my, my cousin died, this is, hello, this is, this is serious. It's real this now. War. That is real, it's real, very, very real. People, men often treat war like games, mm. and it's not. No, no, it's terrible. It's, uh, it's absolutely terrible. But you come back, and one of the things I love about sport is it heals. It mm. truly heals. Yes. And okay, your magic makes people say, yeah, we, we love him still. You've become a real icon of British sport. I know how devoted I was to your style. Mm. Otherwise, I wouldn't have scored so many goals in the school courtyard. <laughs> what, are the, what are the things that you like best about the UEFA Cup run? Because the drama of how it finishes, you knock out serious mm. teams. You do what you think you came to do in 1978 mm. because you're a World Cup winner. The team is, Keith is economical with the truth. Yes. And suddenly there, six years later, you're doing what probably should have been your, your birthright. Yeah. If, you, if you hadn't come to a poor team in 78, and if the Malvinas War, Falklands War, hasn't intervened, you're not only lifting more trophies, probably that Spurs team can become mm. champions. You're talking like me now. Luck. Haha. <laughs> you see? You see how luck... Maybe luck is another word. Maybe chance. Or whatever you want to put it. But... You can see very clearly how that played a crucial, crucial role. Now, coming back to, yes, very clearly, after the Falkland Wars, what, what I am doing here. Very, very clearly what, what I am doing here. And I remember talking with Ricky, and again, Ricky, and I, I said to Ricky, Ricky, this is what we're going to do. We are going to be, there have been a lot, bridges between Argentina and England have been all the time a little bit fragile, say. In the football point of view, with the, with the animal scene, in 1966, they were very, very bad and so on. So when we come with Ricky in 1978, it was a lot of bridges and much, much more, a lot of information of England in Argentina, in Argentina in England. So, so generally the two cultures come a little bit closer right. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I call bridges. So we were bridges, yeah. bridges. And the war happened, and it was, poof, all the British were kind of destroyed. And with Ricky, I said, well, now we have to, we are going to rebuild the bridges. We are going to start to be the bridges. When we play in Argentina, they will say, oh, Ozzy and Ricky play, and it's got a goal, or whatever it is, so the something about England. And, and the other way, uh, and in the so other way around as well. you assumed a role of maybe slightly healing Yes. You deliberately spoke to Ricky Definitely. about saying, yes, we, yes. we have a role beyond simply playing well and winning. Much, things. much beyond football, definitely. And I, and I said to Ricky, Ricky, we are going to be remembered for this thing. Maybe more or maybe the same that our football, our wonderful goal, Ricky's wonderful goal, and so on. Because this is very, very important. And it's very, very important for us as a person to do that. We are going to be defined as a person. You, you mean we have a responsibility yes. for our actions and how we live? Well, 100%. 100%.
Yes, yes, yes. I mean, there are a lot of very bad examples. In don't want to mention, but there are a lot of. And I don't want to put myself in this kind of role model and so on. We are all human. With you didn't no. say that. I understand no. what no. you mean. It's, but it's like the other hand, by our actions, yes. we will be judged, we will be known, and yes. we can look ourselves in the mirror yes. and say, I, I did the right thing, right? That's right. So, yes, when I had to decide, was in France, in Paris, I was not happy. My wife uh, wanted me to come immediately to, to carry on with our house, with our normal life. In London? In London, yes. Pablo and Freddy, of course, they, they're very young, but they wanted to come back as well. So I said, well, so, yes, come back. And it was the right decision? It was a completely the right decision. Here yes. we are all these years later, mm. and everything you said is true. You're part of the national culture, yeah. the Falklands War isn't forgotten, but Argentina and England are Argentina and no, UK. But, yeah. The bridges are rebuilt. It was very difficult at the time to talk about the Falklands War, but uh, now it's much more open. Like, I respect you as mm. a man. It isn't just... You're not here just because you're a footballer. So I I wanted to speak about mm. that. So I hope it's okay. No problem, yeah. But it doesn't mean you can escape from the last section, which is Sean O'Keefe's real question, I think. Mm. You do remember John Giles and Eamon Dunphy and, and Chippy Brady. Absolutely, and, yes. Quiet nights, did you go? Where, was there a chess club to go to or no, we maybe theatre after yeah. the... We, we how, how was that company? That was Osvaldo? brilliant. That was brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. The time I have in uh, in Ireland when I was with the and uh, have a great great time. I mean, no ch no chess, no chess at all. It was no chess. Piano, Some Guinness piano bar. A lot piano of, bar. A piano bar every night. Uh, it was beautiful, wonderful food and. But of course, with uh, the two, three o'clock in the morning. Some and singing. Singing and yeah, exactly. yes, yes. Your son can well, sing quite well. Liam sings that he. Liam sings that he's a singer as well. He, Liam's a good singer. No, he can't sing. <laughs> but he thinks he can. <laughs> So, do you have a voice? I like to. Well, well probably you, you hear Ozzy goes to Wembley, yeah? Ah. Yeah, but I asked you if you've got a voice. <laughs> yeah. a good, yes, that is a We lost question. one. <laughs> no, because I've, I've heard Federico, your, your son, sing, and the trouble is, he likes. Who's the, who's the singer who was a Real Madrid goalkeeper, Spanish singer? Uh, Iglesias. Julio Iglesias. Oh, Federico can sing, but he insists on singing Julio Iglesias. Mm. Come on, have a word. Yes, yes, yes. So no, we of course listen. I wasn't going to mention in the cup for Tottenham, no. but in the in the recording, your sh your shoulders are being held and moved by one of the great Scots of all time, and Mr. Steve Archibald. Archie, Arch Archie, <laughs> Archie, Archie, Archie is another very very good friend of mine. Brilliant player, fantastic player, uh, great centre forward. Uh, yes, I love the man as well. Um, controversial, difficult. Opinionated. Opinionated. Uh, sometimes it's a big, big pain, no, no doubt about it. But it's a great, great guy. Uh, and a lot of fun. So. And, he was, and he was maybe guiding you on the, on the notes, which notes to hit, because we lost, in Chaz and Dave were a, a great duo, and we lost um, one of them, um, yep. Chaz Hodges, yep. uh, recently. Hmm. Um, you were a top of the pop star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I shouldn't have asked you about the singing thing. So in Dublin, there was some singing with uh, Chippy Brady. Who, yes, who, no, we didn't sing Ozzy Got to Wembley, but there was a lot of singing. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice to see. Mm. Our sponsors, um, because you, you have a very nice birthday lunch to go to. You're not late. We're going to walk you there. Mm. Okay. But our sponsors have a couple of questions to finish with. And you can choose. Um, one of them from Bet365 is who was the greatest player you played alongside during your time in England. But we know who it was. Yep. Name him. And tell us something we don't know about his playing style. You mean Glenn? Well, you mean Glenn. Yeah, I mean Glenn. Yeah, yeah. Glenn was uh, Glenn was extraordinarily talented to start with. Um, but uh, that is not what made him a great, great player. What made him a great, great player was his courage. Courage, because it's, people talk a lot about, uh, oh, you're strong because you kick people and so on. That is the easy part. The difficult part is people like Pelé, people like Maradona, people like Cruyff. When you are playing with some bandit, when you are playing with some criminal dressed as a football player, and you carry on having the ball and you're still trying to play, you're still trying to create and so on. This is the people that I always have admired. People like the one I already mentioned, but not only them, people like Socrates, for example. Ah, when you have players like that, Messi, Ronaldo, the Ronaldo now, the Ronaldo, the Brazilian George as well. George Best. George Best. These are the guys that have... Uh, 
Garrincha. This is this, this is what make football what football is right now. We all have a great, great debt of gratitude. All these people right now playing the Premier League, Champions League, and so on, they have an extraordinary debt of gratitude to all these guys. But very, very special to Pelé. Pelé changed the game. Changed the game in the way that it was a kind of a sport, quite popular in certain parts of the world, but he made it a, 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 global, global. a global phenomenon. That was extraordinary. And after that, all the players after him, Maradona and so on, they benefited tremendously because, because of him. Apart from that, he was extraordinary player. For me, when you're talking about the very, very, very best, you mentioned the Stefan, I will mention the Stefan as well, but uh, I, I, had, I, did, I didn't see him play so much. I, I'm a little bit younger, say. So it will def definitely will be Garrincha, it will be Pelé, it will be Maradona, it will be Messi. And if I had to choose a fifth one, it will be Johan Cruyff. From I'm glad you said that. Yes. Yeah, you are from Barcelona, so you like him. And you, I, also, you like, I, 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 and, knew, I knew him, I adored him. He inspired me like Pelé inspired you. Well, literally. Yes, and Johan, not only as a player, but as a coach. That is, uh, he, again, he changed football. All we are seeing right now with the Guardiola and all the rest, uh, Johan have a big, big hand in, on it. He was a visionary. Yep. Two more. Bet365 says, mm, it's a tough one. I've heard you answer this before. Mm. Lionel Messi or Diego Maradona? And I suppose, given that I know how you're going to answer, I suppose I have to say why. I don't know how, what you expect me to answer because I have, they, have, they asked me this question so, so many times. Sometimes I say Maradona, sometimes I say Messi, sometimes I say, I don't like, no, right? Mario Kempes. It's the truth of the matter is this. It's extraordinarily difficult to, to choose between the two. Maradona and Messi, for example, they're incredibly similar. Both are left footballs, both are extraordinary touch by God, if you want to put it like that. Um, free kicks, skill, everything. The only difference maybe is Lionel Messi, to be great, he needs very good players around him. And Maradona was... That, that, that show, he came from kind of middle class in Argentina and so on. Diego, on the other hand, comes from the shanty town. He always will fight the establishment. He will fight everybody. So he was much, he was in particular happy in Barcelona, for example. He got to go to Napoli where he was God and whatever. And, and, and So he went from a middle class city to a tough city. Yes. And he felt in his environment. And his team, the team that he played, he didn't feel, he played with super players in Barcelona, for example. But he was in a way, he was happier for him to play with players that were not that good, say. Fair enough, when Maradona asked for the 11 best players that he played with, he chose very little from when he was a World Cup champion. 1986, for example. I think only one. He chose me, by the way, so it's nice. <laughs> I knew if I kept quiet, he would tell the truth. Yes. And I knew he would choose you. Right. The last one. This is a speculative one. Bet365 ask us, how do you think Jose Mourinho will do at Spurs. Mm. And I think they haven't asked me this, but I'm going to add, how do you think this version of Jose Mourinho mm. with the Amazon cameras on him all the mm. time mm. will do at this version of Spurs? First, I would like to mention Mauricio Pochettino. I think he did an extraordinary job in the club. This five, five and a half years have been absolutely fantastic. He changed the club from one of the also run, say, to proper, proper Champion League every single year and, and little by little, not only playing the first group, but we, we, he, we're going forward. He made them 190 million euros in Champions League qualification and, yes. at a time when they have to pay for the training ground, they have to pay for the stadium. And, yeah. He was a money-making machine he for was, them because was, of his skill. It was incredibly, I know how incredibly difficult it was playing at Wembley, that is a tremendous advantage to the opposition. It was, yes, with the constraint that he had uh, from the money point of view and so on. So he did an absolutely extraordinary job. Personally, I feel he's one of the very, very best managers in, in the world, without a doubt. Destined for more great things Definitely, now. definitely, definitely, yes. Um, now, Mourinho is a, new, is a new chapter. I think he's, it's an extraordinary opportunity for him right now. Because, I mean, he's coming to a club that, I mean, he will not come to us about two or three years ago, for example. No chance. And I think because, obviously, he has won everything in football and he has been extremely successful... Later on, he has been not so much in the way that... Can I speculate mm. that there's a time where if you were in charge of... You were the owner of Spurs. There's a time quite recently when you wouldn't have offered him Spurs either. I don't think. 
No, I don't think the spur will, will offer him. Nor you. No, no me. No, 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 no. Well, we have Mauricio, so no, no, no need to change. I speculate but, that Mourinho feels and sounds refreshed and a little yes. bit more like the original Mourinho now. Yes, it I'm could guessing. Be. But yes, do you agree? Oh, it could be. It could be very well. So it's, it's, in a, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. The best training facility in the world. The extraordinary stadium. The stadium is no word to describe it. How how beautiful it is. Uh, so uh, this squad is very, very competitive. He will definitely add certain touches, Mourinho touches and so on. Sure. So he has a great, great opportunity. I have to say, I have seen it all, well, only two games, but uh, he looks generally very, very, very happy. People say, oh, he's in the charm offensive and so on. Yes, probably he is, yes. After saying that, I think he's very, very genuinely very, very happy. You talk about luck. We're going to loop round and finish the because I, I think... Jose Mourinho in front of the cameras is a different man from Jose Mourinho, dark and unhappy in his office. And the Amazon cameras, which everybody says is a terrible thing, but the Amazon cameras are there watching him all the time. Yes. I think Daniel <laughs> might get a certain version of Jose Mourinho now, which is to the benefit of Spurs, because he likes being on camera. So against my normal judgment, where I didn't like a lot of Jose Mourinho for, for three, four years, mm. maybe since he won the title at Real Madrid when his achievement was very good, I think we're seeing yes. a guy now who it maybe was, some of the best will come out. It was a very, very happy Mourinho. Uh, that before that, and after that, a lot of ways starting to go wrong, say, after exactly what you mentioned, Real Madrid, for example. So before he was fighting all the world and so on, <laughs> but in a way he was very, very happy doing that. Now I think we are talking, it's wiser, we are talking a much more word. mellow personality, probably. So it's going to be incredibly interesting. Ojalá. So, uh, ojalá, yes, because this is, as a, as a person supporter that I am, I, this is what I, I hope so. Maybe Ozzy's going back to Wembley this season. We'll see, maybe. We'll see. It, maybe. Will, it will be great, it will be great to, to win something, yes. Osvaldo Ardiles, um, I knew what kind of person you were when I invited you here. Mm. Um, you've, you've explained and you've told stories and you've talked like a world champion. Mm. It's been a real pleasure. I bet you that people who haven't heard you like this or didn't see you play are going, oh, I'm going to YouTube now to watch this guy. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for explaining this small chunk of your beautiful life. Lovely. We, Thank feel, you very much. we feel lucky. Enjoy. Enjoy.